listening to the Mark Petroni radio program. If you'd like to call, here's the number 416-640-0200. That's 416-640-0200. The Mark Petroni radio program heard exclusively on News Talk Saga 960. Well, it was one of uh, the more shocking cases that came out of some of the Attentions in in Wisconsin, a biracial woman claiming last June that she was set on fire by white men in that state. An 18-year-old biracial woman says four white men set her on fire at a stoplight in Madison, Wisconsin, leaving her with second and third degree burns on her neck and face. And the, Med- the Madison Police Department said uh, it was investigating the case as a hate crime. Well, as time went on, though, uh, they found less and less evidence suggesting supporting her claims. And now it's widely seen as maybe not having happened. Was it a hoax or did it really happen? Well, Miles Kristen joins us from just outside Madison. He's been keeping an eye on this case. Miles, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you for having me. All right, so... Was it a hoax? That's a good question, and that's a serious question that I think we could be asking at this point. Um, when this first happened, I was very shocked. Now, that morning, there was somebody going around Madison who had been going around Madison uh, with baseball bat and a megaphone and a couple friends, threatening businesses, demanding food and money. And that day, the man went into a local Madison restaurant. He was filmed inside the restaurant. I talked about this before. He was going on about Jesus and other Egyptian, and Egyptian figures and so forth, saying this crazy religious rant. Walked outside, uh, was um, resisting police when they first tried to talk to him. They ended up arresting him, and that ended up causing the riot that night in June. This is where the Two statues were ripped down. One of them was actually dragged and thrown, beheaded and thrown into the uh, nearby lake, which is, you know, a quarter mile, half mile down the road. Um, that night, somebody also lit the Dane County Safety Building jail uh, sheriff's department on fire with a Molotov cocktail. And then a few hours later, this woman claims that she was driving, that four men pulled up to her called her a racial slur, sprayed her with some sort of lighter fluid or gasoline, and then threw a match or lighter at her and lit her on fire, and that she drove herself to the hospital. And when I first heard about it, I thought, oh, this is just some sort of crazy retaliation by, you know, some sort of white supremacist or whatever. And then as time went on, there was like, I had I knew some people who had their serious doubts in the story, and then I knew a local uh, reporter who he told me he had talked to police and so forth, and they just said there was no evidence of it. And I didn't want to touch the story with a 50-foot pole because to even suggest that there wasn't complete honesty in the story would have, I mean, the retaliation I would have seen would would have received as well as that same reporter. He said the same thing. He couldn't talk about it because it was so crazy. And now the feds. And the local police have investigated this case. And uh, the thing is, she claims this happened in downtown Madison. Well, in downtown Madison, every single street corner has a camera. And the police and feds went through hundreds of cameras and all sorts of footage, and they couldn't find anything. On top of that, there's, um, you know, where's the lighter? Where's the match? You know, there there's, doesn't seem to be any other cooperating evidence. Well, what so, about her injuries, though? The injuries. She, she had some some marks on her face, but you know, it's like there's just a lot about the story that doesn't add up. Yeah, there was this story in the State Journal, the Wisconsin State Journal. Madison police announced that they have not been able to corroborate allegations made by a biracial Monona woman that she was burned by four white men in downtown Madison in uh, June in what was initially reported as a hate crime and garnered national and international attention. Yeah, she got the support of uh, Prince, uh, Prince Harry, you know, and, and, all this, and, you know, got national news. I mean, you know, this is, this is 
not the first time where we've seen an incident like this that we have to really wonder. I mean, there have been some incidences, of course, the Jesse Smollett case was the most famous. But, you know, the thing is, like, there are incidences that happen that are real. And it's like whenever somebody makes up a case, it's just so incredibly insulting to the fact that, like, there are actual hate crimes out there. There are people who are attacked because of their race or their gender orientation and so forth. Like, things like that do happen, but they're a lot more rare than the media maybe tries to make it look like, you know? And this is just, I mean, I have my serious, serious doubts in the case now that, you know, they're just, there's no footage, and we're talking about an area where there's cameras everywhere. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Miles Kristen joining us on Saga 960. So is this woman going to be charged with something, a mischief, or making absolutely. a false claim? Ab- absolutely not. The, the city of Madison wants nothing to do with this case. Um, I mean, what's it, would, would the feds maybe be upset that they've wasted, potentially wasted money on, on a case? And... Um, that's a whole nother issue, maybe, but, um, you know, you look at other situations where it turns out that something maybe wasn't what we were told, and it's very rare that someone's actually charged for, you know, wasting time and money of authorities. What's your take on the uh, Trump COVID situation? He did a little bit of drive-by, um, you know, politicking, for lack of a better word, uh, saying hello to, to his supporters. <laughs> just outside uh, the hospital where he's being treated. Now they're saying he's going to be let out in the afternoon. Some polls, the uh, the liberal media coming out and saying, oh, he's way behind now. Biden has pulled out uh, double digits. He's up, a, he's up 14 points. Uh, okay. So, you know, I was thinking about it this morning. Like, George W. Bush was the kind of guy that basically all he did was listen to his advisors, right? And, I, and then you got guy like Obama who like, was basically told, you know, by people what to say and do. But, you know, I think he still had some say in it. Um, and <laughs> in the Trump administration, I think we could probably agree that he doesn't listen to advisors and that he just always does what he wants to do. And I mean, I got to imagine there there's constantly like these con- Republican advisors trying to tell him not to do something. I mean, I think leaving the hospital and just... Like, there shouldn't have been people outside the hospital like that. Not, I mean, I thought you'd eventually have like protesters or whatever. It's like, no, just nobody should be outside the hospital. It's a hospital. Like, let's, some areas are just not an area for rallies and whatnot. And, um, yeah, well, there would have been clashes. Like, I mean, yeah, I, I, that's a good point about protesters. I guess people thought, well, well, if he's sick, I mean, if he's got COVID, I mean, you, you don't want to be protesting the fact that he's in there. I mean, what, what are you well, going to say that, uh, you know, this doesn't make us, I mean, is that the is that the right place to have a protest when somebody is getting over a potentially deadly illness? I don't think we actually saw any protesters there, but I mean, just rallying in general, it's kind of like, uh, it's like those the religious fundamentalists that would do the stuff outside of the uh, funerals, completely different type of people, right? But it's just like some areas, like, come on, like hospitals, funerals, and there are certain areas, it's just like, this is not the place for politics and whatnot. And, I mean, it does him getting the virus says a lot to me about, like, you know, you had Herman Cain die several weeks ago from this. You have, now he's get, he's got it. He's got it all, my senator now, just uh, Ron Johnson just got it for the third time. I mean, it does say something about the fact that maybe certain political groups aren't taking it seriously. And hey, I would say that people on the left go on all those big major protests and everything, they don't take it seriously either. I mean, so much of this stuff, you know, so much of this COVID stuff would go away if we just, you know, we just take a few weeks where we're just like, okay, for the next couple of weeks, we're going to limit how much we go out. We're going to, you know, just not like we need a shutdown as much as we just need to like take it really, really seriously for a month. And yeah, I mean, you would see it go down. A but lot. Her- Herman Cain was sick with cancer. I mean, he had, he was in like, you know, the final stages of, of cancer. So, I, and I think a lot of the people who are dying of it, Miles are sick already. They have other problems. I was having this conversation with my wife yesterday, and, and she said, well, they, they died before their time. And I'm going, well, you know what? If they died, then it, you know, it was their time. I, I mean, you could, it's you know. Kinda you could, like, it's you know, kind of like, you know, nobody, nobody ever died of AIDS, right? 
because they, they died from, they had the AIDS and then they died from whatever else. You Complications know? I mean, uh, from AIDS, is yeah. the final nail for a lot of people, you know? So is this thing going to hurt? I mean, I, if people on the left were saying, well, you know, he's doing it, he's faking it because he wants the sympathy vote. And now people are that's, saying, well. That's the, it's the, that was the stupidest theory. I know Joy <laughs> Reid and Michael Moore had put that out. And it's just the dumbest theory because I think him getting COVID really shows that to me, and I think a lot of people, it shows that he hasn't taken it seriously enough. And, um, there, you know, some people would say there's some irony in him getting it. And, um, I don't think it, I don't think it helps him at all. I think it, I think it hurts his chances. And, and also, you know, just because you, you, you got it and you're over it. I mean, we still haven't figured out what are all the long-term effects of it, how it, it affects your, uh, potentially nervous system or your lungs and so forth. Like there can be some long lasting effects from this stuff. And there's some evidence to say that there is long lasting damage from going through COVID. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting because it, it, it has even soured relations between the United States and China even more so now with uh, Rudy Giuliani coming out and saying, and what happened to Trump is directly on China. This was their fault. They did this. And, you know, we're going to get you for it. That, that kind of tone um, I don't know. I, I I understand that people are really ticked off, and my, I'm hearing more and more that the world really is starting to see this thing as having not only emanated from China, but having been released by the Chinese directly as an attack on much of the rest of the world. I mean, specifically the United States. Well, right, right before all this happened, let's remember that in China there were those. I mean, I can't remember which exact if it was China or Hong Kong or whatever, but the protests. There were those major protests going on over there and then the virus happened and then you didn't hear anything about those protests again i bet they were able to shut down all those protests over there as soon as that happened yeah it was interesting and this election of course so much at stake because uh, a guy like uh, ted cruz coming out and saying the democrats aren't joking the country is one vote away from losing fundamental liberties that's your first amendment second amendment just uh, key rights that Americans have enjoyed since the founding. Uh, and people like Ted Cruz are coming. This is this is the real deal here. The Democrats are going to take these rights away from Americans. Is it fear mongering or is this a real thing that that the uh, Democrats are seriously looking at doing some stuff like stacking the Supreme Court? He couldn't answer the question during the debate. So presumably they want to oh, yeah. do it. He wants to, but I mean, the thing is, like, both parties love to point out that extreme of if this guy gets power, if these people get power, and well, at the same time, it's like, well, the the Democrats currently control the the House, the Republicans control the Senate. I don't think that's going to change much, and you know, you do have both parties have some clout. So even if you have a Republican president or Democratic president, you know, they usually can't get their way all the way and even with Trump having all the power when he had House Senate and the White House you could see he wasn't even able to get his way all the way because even the, so many Republicans didn't want to go along with Trump on his policies yeah that's why they couldn't get rid of Obamacare because of uh, McCain voting yeah. against that was just it was one vote away from uh, being able to to get ready to get rid of it altogether and uh, McCain wouldn't bite anyway thank you for uh, for coming on the show again today Miles no problem. Thank you for having me. All right. Miles Kristen joining us from, from Madison, Wisconsin, or just outside. And we're going to take a quick time out. Back with our final scintillating segment of the day after this. 